Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery Knives. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is doing our, my first impression of doing a test with the Work Tough Gear Sada, a collaborated design effort. Uh, I designed the cookery and then approached Victor Lin with Work Tough Gear, and he was so gracious to uh, be willing to take on this project with me in making the Sada cookery. So in this video, I'm going to be doing some tests with it. Basically, I'm going to cut into some wood, um, maybe do some notches, uh, and do a little bit of batoning, cut some paper before and after, to kind of show uh, how the edge holds up and how the cookery performs, just some first impressions. Start off with, uh, I have it strapped to my side. It is attached to my belt. What's nice about it is uh, the... Uh, Velcro and snap. It's easy to slide under your belt and put on. It's really good. It sits really uh, good on the belt. The handle's not too high, so you don't get uh, any type of handle, uh, uh, you know, uh, slamming into your your side or anything like that. So that's really good. If you're hiking on a trail, you might get a little bit of motion on this, but you have two lanyard holes on the bottom that you can put a lanyard strap to your leg and then you won't get any movement whatsoever. So in that sense, the scabbard, the way it rides on the belt is excellent. So that's my first uh, first impression of putting it out. I have not put it on my belt until just uh, right before this video. So it is, uh, it's easy to put on, easy to take off uh, without having to remove your belt. So that's excellent. Uh, good form follows function to the design. And then the other thing is that uh, the way that it rides on your, your belt, again, really good uh, design and uh, carry through with uh, philosophy of use and, and uh, form follows function for the scabbard. You have a nice kydex scabbard and it does have, uh, it has a hole at the bottom that allows water drainage. So that's really good too. Plus you have this whole sl uh, slot here. But you have this part of the blade or scabbard that is not. So if you were to get in water, if you had to wade through some water or something, you know, you could, you could fill up with water pretty easily and, and then you're compromising the, the uh, portion of the belly and portion of the tip of the blade. Well, with that drain hole, you don't have that problem. The water will come out, drain out. And then not only that, you can take the scabbard off when you're at camp, turn it on its uh, back and the or, or even put it upright and all anything that's wet on the inside will drain out and there's lots of places for it to go. So all in all, it's an, an excellent scabbard, especially for field use, for survival use, and for any of your uses of trail or camping or uh, uh, hunting. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, get into some cuts here. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna cut some paper. We'll start off right, right off the bat of seeing how this thing does. So, easy to take out, and as far as cuts go, this is really, really sharp. If I want to carve with it on paper, I definitely can, just by push and pull. Simple pull cut, this thing is very, very sharp, does a very good job. So, on that, we know how sharp she is right at, right off the out of the scabbard, you could say. We know that she can uh, definitely cut through this paper very easily with very little effort. We're outdoors, so there's you know a little bit of uh, water in the air. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to start off with? I have a piece of hardwood here that's been sitting out for a while. I'm going to go ahead and chop into this for a bit and see how we do. Now, I don't really feel I need the lanyard, but I'm going to get the lanyard out of the way for when I'm chopping, because it, if not, it's going to probably get into the cutting area. So, here we go. So far, she bites in really well. bring it in to show 
that I'm getting cuts. I'm not smashing the wood. You can see where it's very nice and smooth here, which means that she's cutting into the wood. It's the edge that's that's taking and removing wood off of this uh, this hardened piece of wood that's been sitting outside for a while. So it's doing an excellent job in that regard. Very, very good. And uh, the other thing is that my first impression of how she feels in my hand, I'm not getting any reverberation in the hand with this when I'm striking. Sometimes you'll feel you'll feel each each strike coming back right transferred right back to your hand. I think what helps transfer some of that weight is the fact that the, the handle's been skeletonized. Now bear in mind when you're talking about a skeletonized handle, it does not mean that you have now sac sacrificed your knife to have an inferior type of handle for a full tank or that it's a false full tank. It's not. It's something that a lot of production companies have been doing for a long time in skeletizing the hand handle to distribute the weight properly where the balance should be. For this cookery, the balance point is right here. Now, I have tried to put her on the, my nail tip, and she likes, because it's right at that curve, she slides. So she, although she has a balance where she doesn't fall over this way, she'll slide one way or the other. So she is well balanced, and uh, which is very, very important. And for a production blade to be this balanced is, is kind of a rarity. I've only been able to put one uh, production cookery on a nail tip and have it stand for me and dance for me, and that was the Ontario Knives. This one would do that for you. If the, uh, the balance point was maybe a little bit more forward, it would, it would definitely stay upright spine-wise and it would probably dance for you. But the balance point for this blade is right where it needs to be, which means when you get up there with the finger choil, it's not too handle heavy and it's not too blade heavy, which is very good and we're going to demonstrate that when we get into notching. But for right now I'm going to do a few more test cuts just to see how she holds up. So far I don't have any, uh, any nicks or any, any uh, rolls, but I've only taken a few strikes. So we're going to try to do a, a few more and see how, we, how she does. Now for this blade, the sweet spot is right in this area. Hopefully you can see that. I'll move forward a little bit to kind of show that. All right, so it's right in, in about this area is where your sweet spot's going to be. Maybe a little bit further, right there. Okay, so that's where, these are the areas in which I'm trying to strike. And again, I'm not getting any smashing of the, the material, I'm getting cuts into the material, which is really great. And she's biting in, even though this is a really hard wood, she's biting in very good. Geometry of the blade, the physics of the blade to do the cutting for me. So again, here we go. As you can see, nice smooth edge. We're chopping in and it's removing the material very good. It's cutting the material, it's not smashing the material. That's very important. Blades with bad edge geometry on the on the uh, you know on the secondary bevel. When it's hitting into the wood, if it gets dull really quick, it just starts glinting off or it starts breaking the wood instead of cutting it. Especially with cookeries because they're so weight forward. Okay, This one does not, right now I have no rolled edges and no chips. Very good. This was a hard wood. All right. We'll try this piece of wood. It's uh, been sitting outside, and uh, we'll try to uh, cut into a little bit right here. Uh, let's see, right here. I 
We're just going to see how she does against, this is going against the side grain. What we want to see is what this material will do to the edge. Not so much what the cookery will do for, to it, but what it's going to do to the cookery. She's biting in really good. That's, you know, more than 20 strikes for sure. And I'll show you what she's done. So right here, as you can see, she's cutting quite a bit of material, taking that material off. Now I'll come back and we'll take a look at the edge. But that's very good. Good deep cuts and she's cutting into the wood, not smashing it. And right here, hopefully you can see it. No nicks or chips or rolled edges. So she's handled that going against the side of the grain rather than with the grain and chopping, which usually could be really harsh on a blade. So she's done really well there. That piece is wet all over me. <laughs> all right. Now we'll try some batani. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it into the, try it here. Okay. Now let me get a baton. That's, here we go. And here we go. Now, the design of this blade was not first and foremost to be a, a baton fiend, but she can split the wood. If you see how she's splitting it right now, you can see that really nice split in the wood, and I'll bring that in so you can see it. As you, as you can see, she's separating that wood real good, and I'm kind of center on it center of it. Sorry, I didn't mean to go below uh, the camera there. But one of the questions would be, this is a very distilled uh, taper on the tip, which might indicate that I have a weak tip here uh, on, the, on this cookery. And if I'm hitting on it, will it break? So we'll finish batoning this. And like I said, this is first impression, so I'm not, you know, going to go and break this all down for firewood. But I'm going to see how she holds up in splitting this wood. And so far, she's doing a very good job. Really splitting it up. I'm going through, going through what looks like a, uh, a knot right now. Here, that wood trying, trying to break. And I'm pounding on this tip here, and she is not breaking. That's a really nice knot there. <laughs> so she's got to go through that in order to get free. There we go. She did it. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. That was, that was a knot we were having difficulty right there getting through. So let's see how she held up. Going through the knots, she held up very well. Very, very nice. And it feels like she's still pretty sharp. Okay? Very good. Excellent. 
So we know we'll, she'll split right through. I could baton the rest of this, but I don't think, you know, for the purposes of it, endurance-wise, that's a later test where I will take her camping or take her up in the mountains or just do an extended uh, length of test. But for my first impression test, she went through quite a bit of material of wood. We'll cut through an, uh, a knot after chopping side, you know, through the side grain of a piece of uh, wood plus pounding into a piece of hardwood wood, and has not suffered any edge damage whatsoever, no rolls and, uh, and no chips. So Sadaf is holding up very, very well. Very pleased with that. All right, so let's see if we can do... Uh, I'm going to take this piece of hardwood and I'm going to try doing a notch with Sada. Now I've already used this piece of wood for, for other blades, so I have other test uh, notches, but we're going to try to see how she does. Now this is, this is hardwood, this is not like really soft wood and it's also not the best wood that I would use for creating a tent stake or or uh, doing feathers with. I'd find something better <laughs> but right now I'm a little hard pressed for good wood to uh, to do a test on. So once you get her bit, you know, she bites in, she really does a good job in getting in to the wood and uh, and you can definitely get good purchase with it and good control over it with the finger choil. Whether you, whether you go back to the, where the finger guard is, or whether you come up to where the finger choil is, and doing these push cuts for notches, it's working. Now I know I'm back and it's hard to see what I'm doing. I'll try to come up a little bit closer. This is where I'm working, right, right here, and what we've done so far. Okay, so I'm going to get in here. Now she is, she has a really aggressive 90 degree spine, and that is good for allowing. Uh, I have some guys driving through with motorcycles, so excuse me on that one. All right. So, so far, we got this where my finger is. This is the notch that I just did. And that's using, uh, choking up where the finger choil is. And I started off behind the ching finger choil with the, uh, with the handle to kind of feel the difference between notching, holding back, or going right up to where the finger choil is and uh, being able to get pushed, push cuts. Now, my thumb resting on top with my finger and the finger troll gives really good control and I don't feel any fatigue on my thumb. However, when I'm trying to give supportive push, because it's such an aggressive edge for throwing off uh, sparks off a ferro rod, it's a 90 degree spine, it kind of, you know, I can definitely feel it with my finger, my, th my other thumb that's assisting in the push, okay? This is really hard, so, you know, extra strength to push and, and better support behind makes it really easier to control. And there we have it, right there. That's the finger notch I was able, or the little notch I was able to do in this hardwood with Sada. So, very, very good. Like I said, really good control, good balance. When you watch me do it, you didn't see me having a struggle with this or struggle with this. I was able to get really good control and keep that knife at a good horizontal level to plane that, the edge that I want for creating that notch. I feel like I have really con control, good control. If I were to sharpen a pencil, I could very easily do it and I can put a really sharp point on that pencil. I'll tell you. 
And as an artist, I think of that because when I go out camping or whatever, I I bring sketch pads with me, and I and I like to draw, and I like to keep my pencil sharp. I do use my knives, so this will definitely do it. Another thing, let me show you how smooth that is. I am cutting that wood. I'm not, you know, just bending it or breaking it or whatever. It's it's slicing right in there, nice and smooth. Very good. All right, so we've done notching. We've split firewood. We've gone against, you know, side grain just for testing durability of the uh, cutting edge, how, how the edge is going to hold up. Is it going to uh, start rolling, cracking on us, or chipping, I mean. And then we also cut some hardwood. So all in all, my first impression of Sada is excellent. Now let's go one final test with paper and see how the cutting edge is. And I'll come up a little bit closer and we can see. So, oh geez, <laughs> my, my, I could definitely shave the hair off my arm. Now I had a plane fly right over. I feel like Chris Tanner. Tanner, are you having all, Chris, are you having all your planes and motorcycles and everybody coming and annoy my team? <laughs> Just kidding, Chris. I know that you deal with it too, along with the, a lot of the other guys who do videos. But for me, uh, this is really nice and sharp and, and it's held up that edge very, very well. Now, could I touch it up a little bit and make it a little bit sharp, sharper? Sure, I could, but I'll tell you something. Right now, if I needed to cut anything or, or continue working with this cookery in camp or around my camp, this will still hold up for quite some time, just with a little bit of a, a, a abuse I've put it through. But the things I, I tested, the things that I pushed it through, uh, you know, as far as uh, pouting into the woods and stuff, uh, would be a telltale if this wasn't good quality steel, if they didn't uh, uh, do uh, a good hardening and tempering of it, or if the edge geometry was wrong. There's a lot of things that, that uh, would be very telling about this uh, if just in the test that I did right now where I would have had some issues. I've had some other cookery that I've tested from very well uh, makers, very good makers, some of them are from Nepal, and I've had rolled edges or I've had some microchips. So no microchips and nothing. This held up extremely well, very comfortable to the hand uh, to, to hold. I didn't feel a lot of reverberation. I don't feel my hands really tired. And what's also nice is the way that this, I designed this back here where it flares out at the handle here. If you can see, I'm going to put the paper behind it. It makes it easier. As you can see, that flares, and you see how it kind of uh, there's a waste there that in this section here that thins out. Plus, you have this uh, relatively nice scalpeled, er scalpeled area right here where it, it uh, comes to a bird beak. When you grip back towards the back of it, I don't know if I can show it very well. There we go. When you're gripping back here for extended leverage, it is very comfortable. I don't feel any hot spots with the with the, the pommel of the handle uh, against my hand when I'm striking, and uh, and no slippage either. I feel I have really good control, and that this isn't going to fly out of my hand, lanyard or no lanyard. And uh, so, with that, I feel very comfortable and very good. Um, at first, when I first held this, I was still a little concerned that I might have might have the handle a little bit too fat. But they did thin it down. I compared it to the prototype. They did thin it down. And actually, for me, it's very comfortable. And I have relatively small hands. A um, little less than medium, as uh, Chris Tanner would put it. But I do have uh, 